Dynasties is a game originally published by Jolly Rogers. I like it very much. It is a war-themed game set in ancient history, uh, in ancient China, and inspired, I believe, by the writings of Sun Tzu. Because uh, you can see how there are many elements in the game that seem to mirror Sun Tzu's art of war. Also, I guess it can be by chance that the game has recently been republished with a different title, which happens to be Sun Tzu. Um, and the game, as you can see now, has been published in a, with a larger box, more colorful box, and in general with upgraded components. There's only a small change in the rules, uh, a new thing that has been added here, and I will tell you about this in my video review as I give you an overview of the components, which is the main new thing here. Um, I will not give you uh, coverage of the rules of the game in detail because I already did that in my video for Dynasties, so you can watch or rewatch that video if you want to get a sense of how the game plays. Uh, let me show you what's in the box and what and how what's in the box is different from the old edition. The box of the new edition of the game is larger and frankly more beautiful, but precisely because of this, it is also less portable than the old edition. As you open the box, other glaring differences start to emerge. The map of dynasties is pretty small, folded in four, and very simple, very basic. Nothing too ambitious, but not particularly ugly either. The new map is folded in two only, it is the same size and it clearly looks much prettier. The color palette is very different and it's just more, uh, there's more decoration in there. There are more things that maybe are not strictly necessary but uh, they simply make things look better. For example, the turn track here is a simple list of numbers, here it's much more elaborate with some turns only appearing in Chinese and this is the score track where you move your marker closer to your side when you score more points than the opponent and it is here. Better integrated visually in the overall map but uh, frankly uh, it's not that big of a difference to me. It's prettier but I never really found this one to be ugly so there's an improvement there, but not one that I was particularly longing for. The rule book. The rule book is in black and white in the original edition. It looks much nicer and better here because it's in color. Uh, there are some passages of the initial original rule book which are a little ambiguous, especially the key one about battle resolution. And they are equally, if not more, ambiguous here. Uh, here you kind of like had to play around when you were trying to learn battle resolution. The sentence that you had was a little unclear. You had to read the... the um, you have to read the example to be able to really understand what it says. What it means, the difference in the numbers on the action cards represents the margin of victory for the combat in that province. Well, at least you know that uh, whoever has the highest number is the victor, and then you understand the details here. Look at the corresponding passage in this book here. Battle resolution. In each province, the newly revealed action cards are compared. The difference between the cards represents the change in the armies of the province. Uh, to me, this is even more obscure than here. And again, you read the rule book, you read the examples, and then you figure out that it's super simple. When you uh, reveal the new cards, you simply add that number of armies to the province. I add five, you add nine, uh, and then they fight, you remove the number, they remove all of the armies belonging to the player with the lower number. So I remove five, the opponent removes the same amount, uh, five until only one side has uh, armies left. In this case, uh, if there were no other armies before, um, this player is left with four. Suppose that I already had two there, five plus two, and I have seven. Because I added five, the opponent adds nine. We remove my seven, we remove seven. Now the other side is there with two. Not a big not a big deal. There is in the rules, however, one change which is kind of important, which is in the event cards. These are event cards that um, may 
be triggered. That is, at the beginning of the game, you shuffle them, you reveal one, and that is the current possible event. When the conditions described on the event are triggered, then you implement the event. For example, if a player has marked three provinces with his number six card, he may select another Whirler card to play during the game. When the condition is triggered, the player um, resolves the event, so then you simply flip the other one and that becomes the new uh, event that may be triggered by further events. If a one is placed opposite a one, the player who is behind on the score track may place an army in the affected province. There is a pandemic. If all play cards have been played, each player removes an army from his reinforcement pool. Things like like this. This is the biggest, uh, if not the really relevant change in the execution, in the dynamics, in the mechanics of the game. Uh, most of the other things are really uh, cosmetic changes. Uh, you still have the Warlord cards uh, and you have the old Warlord cards. But let's compare the uh, basic cards. So in this game, in the original game, each player has two sets of cards. Uh, Warlord cards that grant you special powers and then uh, a deck of cards uh, which is actually divided in two different sets. A hand of standard uh, cards that are marked with the color with the yellow color and they indicate and represent numbers from one to six and these cards you always have uh, at the end of a round after you play them the ones that you play from this set here, go back to your hand. This is a deck of more powerful cards, which are, however, single time use. Once you use them, then they're gone. You can't use them, you discard them. So you need to be careful uh, to preserve your, your resources. So they're very different conceptually from the standard ones. The new cards look, of course, much better. For example, they have different art for each card which was not the case with the original edition. It is more elaborate, colorful, more detailed, pretty nice. But, alas, look at this. The, um, the standard cards are not visually differentiated from the special ones as much. Sure, there is a little uh, frame there, and that's the, that's the difference. But uh, I like the fact that they were in different colors in the original game, I guess here, changing the color would have made the cards less pretty. They're still nice and durable, but in terms of components, they're probably, these ones are probably a little sturdier, even though that may be an impression given by the fact that the card is bigger. It's not that the material quality is different, it's just the aesthetic which is different. And of course the other side also has a set of cards with similar art. Now, the biggest difference to me. In the game, you will place score markers on the board to indicate the value of each province. The this, in the old edition, you have this set of markers here and you place them randomly on the board. They are face up, they're just falling face down right now and they show three numbers. That indicates the number of points that the uh, province will generate for the player who controls it during a scoring round. You score points three times in the game, at the end of round three, round six, and round nine. That is, whoever controls this province will score three points at the end of round three, two points at the end of round six, and three points at the end of round nine. This one, four for, for uh, round three, Round six, round nine. Pretty simple, pretty uh, basic, obvious. I didn't feel any particular need to change that. But look how that function has been resolved in the new edition. These are the markers that you place, not on the board anymore, because they wouldn't fit, but by the board matching them. For example, this is the marker that you place to indicate the value of Chin, the value of Chu, the value of, of uh, Qin Yan, and so on and so forth. You have some extra ones because you will assign them randomly. 
basically what you do is you place all of these markers at the beginning of the game with the well first they easily fall apart so maybe I should glue them truth is I'm not gonna use these markers because I find them way overproduced here uh, you place this side here visible towards the map and you can see only one number is colored that indicates uh, that in the first time you score in round three see there are three little dots there this is worth four once you score the province uh, then you turn it and here you have a reminder this is going to be round one round four did we really knit this uh, i mean is, is it really that hard to tell which one is which, which one is round one, round two, and round three, did we need the color, did we need the reminder? This seems to me way unnecessary, actually fiddly, and it took me a while to peel them. Uh, I just don't see the point, I just don't see the point. Now, this being said, actually, one of the reasons why this was done is because uh, they wanted to remove the uh, score markers from the main board because now the armies are much bigger than they used to be. The old armies are cubes, white cubes and black cubes, simplicity itself. The new armies are toy soldiers, which sure are much more thematic, but as you can see they clutter the board much more. And frankly once you have a bunch like this, it's not that easy intuitively to see how many you have. You kind of have to place them a little bit uh, if they're like messy around. Um, I just find them much less intuitive to play than when you have cubes that clatter the boards less. They're more functional, easy uh, to take, to put on the board, uh, to take out. You don't have to worry about making them stand. Of course, if they don't stand, they start sliding around. They just don't look good. And if I'm playing with toy soldiers, uh, it's just easier. I mean, this is one case in which I think that making the game prettier simply makes it a little less easy to play. Small details, the game is the same, but I really don't see the necessity of this change. This is not an Ameri trash game. You don't need to make it look like it's a smaller version of Shogun or Ikuza. Uh, it is a game that is pretty abstract in nature, and I always found this cube to be perfectly serviceable. So, simply put, this edition looks better in most cases. Frankly, these little guys, I don't even think that they look all that better, on top of the fact that you have to make sure you turn them. These guys don't even look better. But soldiers do look better than cubes, no doubt. This map does look better than the previous one. I And the cards also look better. Um, I just found the old components to be much more functional, that the old components emphasized ease of gameplay. It may be, I can remember that there's a smaller company, a company that um, probably didn't want to invest a huge capital, but it's one of those cases where necessity turned out into opportunity, meaning the old uh, game has much simpler, more basic components, and it is perfectly playable, it's intuitive, everything works very well. Here you have to make these beautiful components work a little bit more, which kind of annoys me. Um, the game is still great, the game is still absolutely great, but frankly I much prefer to play it with the older edition, simpler, nicer, much more basic, but I think that actually the more abstract nature of the original components matches the spirit of the game much more. This is not exactly a war game, actually I would say this is an abstract simulation of the interactions of relative forces in warfare. You add five, I add four, means you add one. And I'm perfectly fine with uh, armies being represented by, by these cubes. I don't even see them entirely as armies. I see them as uh, larger representations of armies, economic factors, uh, things like that. I really like, I really believe that this uh, set of components matches the simple, abstract, direct, uh, intuitive, straightforward nature of the original game. 
I think that the original game called Dynasty is more Sun Tzu than Sun Tzu. I mean, in Sun, Tzu, in Sun Tzu's philosophy, one of the great important concepts is conservation, is economy. I think that if given the choice, probably he would go for this one rather than, than this one. So, Sun Tzu is a new edition. If you don't have the old one and you really um, think it's important for you to have these overproduced components, if you really want to fool yourself into believing that this is a soldier, uh, this is a war game, this is a mini Ameritrash, and you prefer to play with toy soldiers, please go ahead by all means. Um, me, I think I'll keep playing with this one. I'll still uh, keep this copy around because I often uh, play the game with my students when we talk in class about Sun Tzu. So I actually have multiple copies. But if I have teaching a large class, I need extra copies. I think I'll still look for these ones. These are the ones that I'll probably want to add to my collection instead of this copy here, instead of this edition here. It works good. It works well. The game remains the same, the main game remains great. The new rules, mechanically, the event, they also add something to the game. But again, I really like the straightforwardness and the mechanic as well as visual economy of the original game, which remains my favorite edition of the game.